Hello, Few Candy here, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines. And last time out, we came in and built this festival site, and it is still absolutely ramoed. I can confirm. It's uh, yeah, it just doesn't stop. It honestly just doesn't stop. This flow of people have just continued to flood into this festival site, and it just yeah, it just continues. Whether there's a concert on or not, they're loving the campsite. That's what it's all about. Place a hundred thousand tents and the people will come, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. The comments certainly seem to suggest that you did, and honestly, I had so much fun building this out. So much fun. And it's just properly made me want to go to a festival now. Made me very nostalgic for it. But we did also have a live stream where we came in and built this recycling waste processing centre with this massive car scrapyard, which I'm absolutely in love with. I love how this has come out. All the decals and everything just absolutely make this area, I find. All that kind of roughness on the ground and the ideas of the overgrowth that came from you guys watching in the chat. The little fire, everything. I'm absolutely loving the live streams and the viewer input on these. And I think it came out pretty nicely, all things considered. Uh, Skidmark Junkyard, as we named it. So, yeah, thanks for that. And we will come out and build out this area further in more live streams. A bit more junkyards. Certainly some unique factories in here as well as we get more industry in. And sorting out these warehouses and logistics of what they should be holding and... and that kind of thing. But the traffic as well doesn't seem to be too bad coming out of here and onto that connection onto the highway there at the moment. So all in all, yeah, I think it turned out all right. And thank you so much for all the support on that stream because it was an awful lot of fun for me. So just before we come on to today's episode, there are a couple of things that I'd like to take care of. And the first one is the name for our festival site. So you may have seen on the channel, I did a poll and the results are, of course, in. And it was pretty close between the top two. So in second place was Candy Rocks, which was such a lovely suggestion that was made on the live stream by Thomas Keating. I really love that name. Thank you, Thomas. It was so close, but it just came in second. And winning the poll was a burning tent festival. Of course, it was an obvious choice, considering all of the tents burning down consistently at this festival site. So that is the winner. Burning Tent Festival, and it was suggested by two of you in the comments, by Rolf Spanbauer and Ronald Clay, so thank you both for that suggestion. It turned out to be the most popular, so here we have Burning Tent. Get about Burning Man, it's all about Burning Tent. Now the other thing that I want to do is fix this bus stop that I did very off piste as it were, at the start of the stream, so we definitely want to just fix this up and make sure it's working all correctly, because it's, it's not going in the right direction at all. And do you know what? We've even got a fence over the road here, so that was a big fail. That was a big fail as well. So let's fix up this fence for starters. We'll just bring that back to there. And then I will just grab that one-way bus road and upgrade all of this. In fact, we can just keep that like that for now. We'll move back that node from the path. That makes a little bit more sense there. We may as well actually continue that, that path on down. We do have the crossing there, so I think that makes sense. Let's just grab that pavement path. We'll turn a full snapping. We'll just put an, a nice little connection there. And of course, we are going to have to break this fence the other side too, which is absolutely fine. Now, I want this coming in the other way, because at the moment, when we look at our slides, they're looping around and going back on themselves. So it would just make much more sense if they just came in that way and then back out. And in fact, even having it as a two-way bus road, I think is probably what makes sense here. So let's upgrade it to that, like so, and then we will grab the bus lines. And I'm actually just going to delete them out just for a second so that we can put them in properly here. So I'm going to grab the first line, it's just going to come in nicely and sit on the side like that. And then we'll also grab the second line, which can come and sit on the other side of the bus road, like so. And all those people are now just gathering here for some reason. <laughs> What's this little party about? Using public transport? Going to campsite? Why are you waiting there? What what public transport are you taking from here? I don't understand. It's all the high wealth elder tourists, isn't it? <laughs> They're getting confused. But there we go anyway. We've got our buses on both sides of the road. And I am just going to ban all of the other traffic from here because I don't want it coming through. I don't mind the taxis so much, but we definitely don't want cars or any of the other traffic cutting through this way. 
So let's plan all of those from the entire road there. We'll just have buses and taxis coming through. Now hopefully that should make a little bit more sense from a traffic point of view now that they're not looping back around on themselves and making congestion that way. And unfortunately the busiest bus stop here is on the wrong side. So what I might do here is actually just copy across this design onto this side as well so that we've got one on both sides. Um, so there we go. So we have got a cute little bus stop design there with a little restroom as well for anyone who is waiting. And we could just add a tiny bit of extra detail into this. I am just going to grab a couple of little benches. I think we'll just do the one, the basic ones without the backs there and just place these in where we've got a little bit of room along the edge of the pavement here. Just as a little bit of extra decoration for those people waiting for those buses. And in fact, I'm going to stick it right in the back underneath this shelter here as well. Make it look a little bit more like an actual bus shelter. So yeah, there we go. I think that makes a lot more sense and looks a lot nicer than it did when we did it on a whim on the stream there. So coming on to today's build, I am finally going to do something with this island here. So now this comes ready built into the map. If you get the Takatahulu map, off the workshop from Eggsy. Eggsy has already built in this fantastic castle. And what I am going to do is just build it up just a little bit. I've got some grand ideas for how we can decorate up the inside of this, but whilst keeping that original shape that Eggsy has built into the map, because I really want to preserve that. And I was very reluctant to demolish this, but I have got some grand ideas, like I said, for how we can give it a little bit more height and a little bit more pop. It's all I'll say for now. So now first things first, what we do want to do is make sure that this is connected up and I am going to connect up this island by ferry only. And in order to do that, it does mean that we are going to have to have certain services available in the city, which we currently don't have. And that is all of the services available by a helicopter. So at the moment we have the medical helicopter depot here that we've built into the witch doctor medical center over there, but we do also need to get fire and police in. And one little point that I've been kind of eyeing up for one of the helicopter depots is this little peninsula here by the Solitude Port, which Overcharge Egg built. I'm thinking one of them can fit in quite nicely next to all this industrial. And I think it'd look quite cute having a helicopter depot sat out here on this peninsula. Easy access to the skies, that sort of thing. So in order to do that, I am just going to grab, and I think what I'll do is just a very small one unit road. We might actually even use the industrial one unit road for this. I'm going to bring a road just off this corner, like so, and then along the edge here, because I kind of want to keep a little bit of the height of this peninsula into this build. And of course, the first thing we build, and I've got trees on the road. Now that slope is pretty steep so what we will do is just reduce that a tiny bit as it filters up onto the hill to get a little bit more of a sensible approach up into the helicopter depot and we can bend that a little bit so it curves round nicely there I'll just shift that tree over a tiny bit now for here I think we will put in the police helicopter depot which fits in really nicely into this space just like that and there's a little bit of wonkiness on the fence there, but I don't mind that too much. But I think we will just grab move it and just move it up ever so slightly. So I have just adjusted that nose slightly and that's made that look a little bit more sensible. The building's on the ground. There's a little bit of lumpy bumpy in the fence there, but again, I don't mind that. We are out on a peninsula, so I think that makes sense. And I was considering extending the keys round, but I think actually what we will do is a bit of rock detailing around here. And there we go. So we have just continued that rock detailing that Overcharged Egg put in all around this peninsula up to the Palavan Park and that we have also had in our Carina Marina area as well. And then just one big simple rock there, which I think kind of flows on nicely from the rocks again that the Egg put up into the Solitude Port area there and around this beach area. I think that looks quite nice. 
And then I've just added a little turnaround area at the end here using a bit of node controller to stretch out that end node. Bobbed off the tree so that we haven't got that vanilla beach tree in there. But otherwise, I think, yeah, that will do for the police helicopter depot. I think that fits in really nicely into that little peninsula there. And then for the fire helicopter depot, I am going to put it in this little corner behind the industrial steel plant here. So again, I'm just going to grab a very small one unit road here. Now, because these junctions are super close, I'm actually just going to bring it down here because we can't bring it out there because it will cross through the steel works plant. So we'll just turn stuffing on to get a nice angle. I'll bring it out as a bit of a frontage road and then back up right behind this steel plant here. Of course, let's actually turn off tree anarchy <laughs> this time. And then we'll grab our fire helicopter depot and we'll place it in right here. Now we have to do a little bit of adjusting. It's just clipping very slightly onto that highway, but we've got some room to play with this side. I'm just going to pull that up so that fence is really nicely lined up against this frontage road here. And what that means now is that we don't have clipping onto that highway. So I'm kind of accepting that that roof is there. And actually it looks kind of cool when it's right up against the highway like that. I think that looks pretty neat. So now I definitely want to bob off these trees and these little bushes as well that are now spilling out onto the road. So let's go into bob. And firstly, for the alders, let's definitely switch them out for a Douglas fir. And I think we'll go for, yeah, the 20 meter ones there. And now with the bushes, let's go into the individual props here and we can find the bushes that are on the road and then remove them. So that would just be these ones here, one more to get, and there we go. So they're all now gone from the road, but we have kept the other little bushes in for a bit of extra detail in there. And I don't think there's going to be anything else that we need to do for that. I do just want to bring in a little bit of fence along the front here. So what I am going to do actually is grab our corrugated iron prop fence and we can draw this in using a prop bind tool here. And we'll make sure that linear fence fill is on so we can get nicely to the end here. And we'll yeah, just bring that in along the edge of the road there. And behind that, I think we will just add a couple of trees in for decoration. So there we go. So we have now got our fire helicopter depot in as well. And that gives us all three of the main services there. Now, the one that we can't do by helicopter is clearly garbage, which they need. So what I am going to do is I'm going to have to replace a little district recycling hub there. Now, it only really works with this. I don't want to replace one of the vanilla ones. So unfortunately, this design really won't work unless you've got access to the steam workshop to get this tiny little district recycling hub because that'll sit really nicely on an island because it's not too big and it also has massive processing rates so it's never going to have an issue with garbage but otherwise garbage can be a problem when you're creating an island without road connections so coming back to our island first things first i want to get the ferry line in so i am actually just going to have to remove this and what i'm going to do is actually move this over to another part of the island so that we can kind of preserve its status a little bit. So I'm actually just going to move it out to this peninsula here and we'll do a little bit of terraforming just to make this make a little bit more sense. So we'll bring down the height of the land and smooth it out just a little bit. We'll bring down a small beach area here of slightly lower height and then what we'll do is we'll just smooth that off so it's kind of gentle slope down to it as opposed to that cliff edge just like that i think will be nice and then we can also grab the nice reed detailing here as well and place that back in around this so that we're preserving all of that lovely detailing that XC has put in for us so first thing here is to get in our ferry stop and we will just use the very simple small ferry stop for this so i am just going to and it's not going to like it's not going to play ball we're on the edge of the water here but i'm just going to place it in there and then we can shift it around a little bit to make sure it's in the exact location that we want. Now, I think I will put a key around this because we've got these lovely old castle walls here and some of the content creator keys go really nicely with that. Just the simple key wall will look really good in that kind of theme. So let's just place in some of this. I think we will just have it like that and I've extended it out down the front of the ferry here so it gets rid of that very concrete vanilla key that you can usually see there and just helps to decorate it up a little bit more like that, I think. So I think that looks really cute up against these old brick castle walls there. Now, because there's not really going to be any cars driving around here, I am actually going to unlock this road segment. And then what we will do is convert it into a park life path as road option. And we are just going to use the concrete path for this. 
and then what we can do as well just to fill in some of these little spaces that have arisen here is use a little bit of surface painter just to help make that make sense we'll need to tidy it up with brush tool here but it will be essentially something along those type of lines now let's connect up the ferry before i forget so having a little look at the ferry lines at the moment it comes in from woodhaven it goes up to stanton island back down to prepare to market and then loops around solitude port and the university here so what i think i would like to do is bring it in as a stop before it goes into this loop so we'll just pause the game and we'll just break the ferry line here bring it back just a tiny touch and then we'll continue it on from this way and bring it out like so and then we'll grab this side and this is going to be a really steep turnaround for the ferry it's probably going to look a little bit odd so we might need to adjust it further down the line but we'll bring it out like that so essentially the ferries will come in and out of the island stop here so yeah there we go we have added that now in as a stop and we do need to bring electricity over to here as well which is going to be awkward it is going to be awkward and i had considered putting in a pedestrian bridge but i'm not going to i'm going to make them use the ferry i don't think that would be realistic here but unfortunately we are going to have to put in an electricity pylon across this waterway and the obvious choice really is from out from the side of the ferry here and across so let's turn off collision so we don't get rid of any of those rocks and we'll just bring it out like that hopefully with minimum electricity pylons and then we'll just need to check that ferry line and make sure it's not yeah it's not cutting into that line there so that's not too bad but yeah i think that will have to do even though it looks absolutely pants and we can kind of hope that maybe if we put something here we can get the electricity to jump further down the line but we will see when we come to the build so then let's just grab our rural power lines and we can connect it up around the edge of the island here to the ferry stop so coming on to the main things that i want in this build the main feature that i actually want in here is one of the monuments which is the castle of lord chirpwick and there are some buildings that we need to put in in order to unlock this so some more unique buildings now this is absolutely just to be clear a temporary solution and we will be getting rid of these but what we need in order to get that in is firstly the statue of colossus so i'm just going to pop this in here and that is 100 percent not staying there just to be reiterate and be super clear about that point we also need the sea fortress and this is something i feel that we can integrate onto this island so i'm actually just going to plop this right at the end here for the moment and we'll probably move that around a little bit and then the other thing we need is this observation tower again 100 percent not staying over solitude port like that just to be really really clear and then the final requirement is also this old street market now I am actually going to put this inside this castle as well so let's just for now go ahead and delete out these walls that we have inside now I am going to be putting some of these back because uh, I really want to preserve as much of what Eggsy's done here as possible so we will be putting some of this back in but for now it is going to go just in this little area and then we'll be replacing it around the buildings that we put in further down the line so with the old market what i do need is a road in here in order to place it in there so let's just grab our park life path road and i'm just going to put in a very basic bit like so and then we'll grab the old street market and we have got collision and anarchy and everything else on so nothing should delete we'll just place it in there like that for now and then what we can do is grab the nodes and this and move this up now in terms of orientation what i want to do here is get this bang on in the middle of this gate here so that you kind of look out through this gate from this magnificent park that Eggsy has built here down through into the old street market building i feel like that orientation is absolutely key here so we need to get this spot on and straight coming right through this gate here and of course what we can do here as well is grab that path and we will connect this up so that there's a complete smooth connection going in there and I can tell by doing that that it's not completely straight. So let's just shift that over just ever so much. And I think that is now looking pretty good there. So what that means is we should now have unlocked Lord Chirpwick's castle, which we have. So let's go ahead and place that in. And I'll just put this up against the road for now and then we can switch out the orientation of it. 
So now with the castle, what I would like here as well is this orientation to be completely lined up. So again, you could see it through this gate, through the Old Street Market, coming out the other side. So I am going to move this back just a little bit because I want to have space in here to be able to put in a really large plaza in between the two. We're going to have to watch out for this path. We might have to just shift that over ever so slightly. But let's go back here and just check this orientation so we can see that turret is really nicely central as we come through here. Now if we just go into free camera mode, we can just take a moment to appreciate this and check that this orientation is right as you come down this street here. These lovely old European buildings, castle turrets, the bridge, the benches, everything. And then you come out and we'll have this lovely plaza here with Lord Chirpwick's castle right there. And now, of course, I'm going to come in. I've deleted the Statue of Colossus. I'm going to delete that observation tower because we 100% do not want them in there for now. Now that we've unlocked it, we no longer need them. I think if we just go to an early evening shot for a moment, we can just take stock of the orientation of this from a few different angles to make sure that that looks okay. And I am pretty happy with that and the height of it sitting within those massive castle walls there. I think that's looking pretty good. We go over to William's point here and really from all angles that doesn't look too bad there. So let's get these buildings connected up and then we can talk about what we're going to do in the castle grounds around it. So I'm going to grab one of the park life paths as roads again and what we will do let's turn snapping on here and we'll bring this up as a road connection and we'll want to slope this nicely so let's grab these nodes. And let's slope this nicely up into the ground there like that. In fact, we can lift that up just a little bit further. Now, in terms of the rubbish collection that we do need to deal with on this island, I'm just going to add in, and we'll turn snapping off so we can get it in nice and tight, a very small road round the edge of the castle here. We'll just bend it round this corner and then come into a bit of a kind of grounds maintenance area here. So here we will add the very small district recycling hub. So that will give us garbage processing and collection facilities for this whole island. And they've already got the helicopters to deal with services. And then the other thing that I would actually like to add in here is the campus grounds keeping, because I think it just lends itself really well to sitting outside at Castle, this type of asset. So what we will do is come into districts. We're going to grab our university district from over here, bring out a very small bit. And we'll just highlight this little area here. And then what we can do is break that off so it's not continuing to come over in this direction. Then we have got a very small campus area here in which we can now place our groundskeeping building. And I just think that looks quite neat up against this district recycling hub. And what I will do actually, I think I'll spin it round and put it in this side. We'll just move this road out ever so slightly. And we'll change this round. So this is sitting at this end. And then we'll have the bins up next to it. And let's definitely use a bit of surface painter here to continue that gravel theme that we have in the groundskeeping hut there. And then we can just use a little bit of fencing to just finish this off. There we go. So we have just got that set up with a little bit of fencing, a little bit of bushes around it. So it's nicely hidden away and you wouldn't see it if you were a tourist now coming in on the ferry going up this hill towards the castle. It's all hidden away nicely. So let's now continue the road on round. So we'll just upgrade all of these pathways around the edge of the castle into the park life path with road and get that so we're all flowing throughout the castle. Okay, so I have upgraded all of these to park life paths with roads and I've just noticed we do have people coming in. I'm just going to check out this ferry we've connected up the road down to the castle at the bottom there and yeah we have got people coming into the island so that is pretty cool and they are all just flowing down these paths down to the sea fortress there i'm just going to adjust this up slightly so it's right up against that path so we don't get any of that weirdness there and if we just lower it down a little bit then the height will make sense next to the path as well um, but I think actually that location for it is absolutely fine. It's pretty much bang on in line with the flow of this view down through the old street market into Lord Chatwick's castle there. So I think that's all good. 
Now here, I do want to bob off this parking. So let's go ahead and do that. So yeah, we have got rid of all of those car parking spaces out the front. So now let's just have a little think about this plaza that we want here. Now it's not directly in the center of this gate, but I am okay with that, I think. But what we will do is create a really large plaza area, which we can then decorate up in front. But what I would also like here is another one of these bridge gates over this side. So what we are going to do there is go ahead and copy these assets and we will place them in. And I'm thinking right about here is where we want them. So we are going to have to break these walls and just fix that up a little bit. But that is absolutely fine. And so there we go. So we have got the gate in and brought the walls up in around it. So I think that is now ready to get in our road network. So let's grab the Park Life Path as a road again. And what we will do here is just bring in a really nice big square plaza. And I think we will do it just like that. So it joins onto the Park Life Path against the edge of the castle walls there. And that seems like a decent enough size. So I'm happy with that. What I will do now though is surface paint this all in. So we've got a nice concrete area to work with. What I would like to do is bring in quite a large water feature. So we're going to go into our brush tools. I'm going to bring right down the brush strength here. And we're just going to create a very small pit. I'm going to grab that bottom level and we're going to drag that out. And it will fill a lot of this plaza in that way. Now we'll grab the content creative keys. And what I'd like to do for this is bring out a reasonably large-ish square area that we can then fill with water like that and now what we can do is grab our water source and we'll drag it down to a really small water capacity just put it on point one for this drop it in there hit pause as always and then if you just drag that height down you can get it to fill this area so i think we'll just have it just like that and then let's hit play and see if we get any flooding issues now, right in the middle of this water feature, I would like to put a statue. So what I'm going to use in order to do that is one of these blocks that we used for the keys uh, back in Woodhaven. So I'm just going to place that in the middle and this will act as a plinth for our statue. And then we can just drop this right down so that it's at an appropriate height and make sure we've got it lined really nicely in the middle of this area. And I can actually see now it doesn't look like it's perfectly straight on so let's just adjust those keys and make sure that's absolutely spot on in the middle of this plaza area and of course we want to make sure everything is aligned to the center of this old old street market that being the absolute key for this area is the orientation and alignment of all of these buildings to create that magnificent flow as we go through the area but then on top of this block i have this statue from the workshop that i would like to use here which is a rather large bust style statue so we will just place that there and then what I'd like to do is put that right out on top of this block so we'll just need to use move it to raise it up and just place it nicely in the middle of this fountain area so then if we check the view coming down from here we have got this large statue sitting out in the middle and I think just to cover up this block a little bit more we will actually just lower that down just a tiny bit so that it's a little bit more hidden into the water there. I think like that will work a little bit better. Let's just go back and check that view from there. So yeah, liking how that looks. And then I also do have these fountain jets from the workshop that I would like to use and incorporate into here as well. So yeah, I think like that is the effect that we want here. So we have this really nice little plaza area that we can then come in and do some lots more detailing around when we come to do the detailing time lapse. So we will put in some planters, potentially some other little statues, definitely some benches and that sort of thing running through here. And I would also like to join it up with paths so we can get people walking around, which we can do right now. So I will, because we've got a surface painter here and I don't want lights just randomly placed, we'll take the gravel path because we won't be able to see it and we can just connect it up to the keys at all four corners there that we can get people hopefully walking across. Hopefully they'll come down out of the market and choose to go around the quays if they're getting to the Lord Chirpwick's Castle over there. Now for the rest of this area, what I would like to do is kind of follow on from this European style old street market here by adding in some of the European high density buildings into this. 
Now the difficulty with this is, is that both of these buildings are incredibly noisy, so we can't be putting in residential into this area. And if we put in commercial, then we also need to have cargo facilities, which clearly I don't want to have on this island. I think it would ruin the aesthetic of it. So what we are going to do is just go for using Rico to convert some of the commercial buildings into dummies, so into essentially our parks, so that we can use these here without them functioning as commercial or needing to have that cargo delivered to them. So that's what we're going to do is create quite a intricate network of these style of buildings. So I'm going to go ahead and place in some of those in a little time lapse. So there we go we have placed in quite a few buildings and i've placed some dotted around the market street so it doesn't look quite so straight there from the initial angles and then just a few blocks here dotted around these cobblestone streets these one-way streets which we have a bit of a one-way system now flowing around here of course we've got two-way all the way around so there's access to all points but i've left a few little areas clear so in here we will come in and do some fountain detailing in there I'm going to use this area as a bit of a cafe plaza. So I'll put up some awnings, make it look like there's a restaurant or something over here, and then set out some outdoor tables where people could sit right at the foot of the castle, looking out down onto the fountain plaza here and out to the market street there. That'll be the idea of that area. And then I have just extended the castle walls that Exy originally put in here around the bottom of Lord Chetwick's castle there, just to extend that all out. 
there's lots of detailing that we'll need to come in and put around here to fill in some of these gaps with surface painter probably do a little garden out here with some benches keep a bit of greenery in there as well but yeah lots of lots of gaps to fill and then this plazas to detail up as well and there are quite a few people flooding in here now so if we look at how busy this is we're getting 103 passengers a week there are people waiting lots of people coming and going to and fro and we are getting some issues with death care which made me wonder if actually we do need to put a crematorium out here so i am actually just going to plop one down in this little services area around the back here so let's just make sure we've got collision turned off and then we'll move this i think we'll just move this to the end up here like so and then i will use some surface painter again just to make this gravel so it blends in a bit more with the buildings and the surroundings around it rather than having that concrete in there and then we'll just cover that up with a little bit of forest brush so we should be covered from all angles now hopefully those skulls will go away there and we'll be left without any issue and that does mean we're going to have hearses now and rubbish trucks driving around but i think we can live with that so before we come to detailing up the inner side of the castle there is just one thing that i would like to do out on this side and that is add in a very small little market area but also a riding stables because i feel like an old european castle would have a riding stables outside it so we are going to use the tourist park riding stables so i'm just going to place that in we've got collision on anyway and then we can drag it around and place it how we'd like and i'm thinking i would just like it up against the castle walls like this so what we will do is grab our park life path as a road and we'll just extend this out and make sure that is hooked up into the riding stables there so we'll do that just like that and i'm just going to align this so it's properly center into the edge of the riding stables and I definitely don't want those cars there. So let's just check with Bob that there must be uh, invisible car parking spaces. So let's get rid of those. And then I will actually just delete these cars so that they're gone. Now, of course, we have some detailing opportunities around this to extend out the paddock with the fencing, exactly like we did in the Bill Air Country Club. So we will do something similar over here. But just in this other side, I would like to get in a little market stall area. And so for this, I've actually got these little props, which are some very cute antique market stalls. So we're going to use these to decorate up this area and make it into a little bit of a sort of historical marketplace is what we're going for here to fit in with the vibes of the castle around it so these are not commercial they do just act as parks so again it will mean that we don't have to have trucks coming down here we could of course put in the green cities ac uh, assets but again we'd need to have cargo coming in here to supply those with produce so that is why i'm going to avoid them at this time so I would just like just a really small marketplace here, nothing too substantial, but just somewhere that people can come and have a little look as tourists. I think the land is a little bit bumpy here. So yeah, we will just grab our terraforming tools and just make sure that it is completely flat. So we've got flat land to work with. So we'll just go ahead and arrange these market stalls and then we can be right back. So yeah, there we go. We've just laid out a few different market stalls here. And now what we will do actually behind it is extend the castle walls ruins. So let's just grab the ruined castle walls. And what we will do is, yeah, bring out a few patterns behind it, exactly like Eggsy had in the original map, so that we can replicate some of those ruins out here. As if there were buildings here built outside of the castle that have now since been completely ruined. So yeah, something like that I think will do nicely there just to finish off this area. But what we do want to do here as well is actually fill in some of this with sand so we get that nice kind of ruined texture that Eggsy had inside the castle and around those ruins there, which I think goes really well with them. Kind of broken rubble almost look. If we go into decals, we can use some of these just to break up some of that sand texture as well, which I think works pretty nicely in this area. Then, of course, as well, we can use a little bit of undergrowth in here just to get that kind of grown over effect, which I think will look nice. OK, so that is really all the main assets that I want to get in here. So I think now it is just a matter of coming through and doing the detailing. So I may plop a few little more market stalls out the front here, uh, maybe a little souvenir shop or something of that description for people arriving on the ferry, do a bit of an entrance area there into this kind of historical castle village area 
And then, of course, we'll detail all up around here. So add in lots of detailing into the plaza, add in our cafe eatery plaza with outdoor tables, that sort of thing. Fill in all of these blank areas, a nice fountain in the middle of that roundabout there. Some little gardens for these houses at the back here. And then a bit more detailing around the front of the riding stables and bringing out that paddock and around the market stalls as well. So I will jump into a detailing time lapse and be right back. So there we go so just before i come on to go over the detail that i've just done i do want to do something very important actually to this area and that is give it a name so i'm just going to paint in a district over this whole island and we are going to name this island after someone really quite special so we're going to call it eggsy island 
Now, for those of you that don't know, Eggsy is the map maker of this amazing Taka Tahulu map that you can get from the Steam Workshop. There is a link in the description below. So he made this map. He originally built this castle, the walls at least, or what's left of it after I've semi-destroyed the middle of it. But he built this castle and it comes with the map. So in honour of Eggsy, this is now Eggsy Island. And we are also going to rename the castle of Lord Chirpwick to the castle of Lord Eggsy as well, just in honour of him. And Eggsy, I would add as well, is not only just the map maker, but he is the person who randomly stumbled across me on Twitch, encouraged me to start the YouTube channel. So really, the fact that we are here in Oridon now is really quite a lot down to Eggsy's doing. So thanks to Eggsy. So yeah, in honour of him, we have the castle of Lord Eggsy on Eggsy's Island. Hope you like it, mate. And seriously, thank you so much for all of your support. So to go over just what we've done in the detailing, so all I've done around here actually is try to keep this main fountain plaza really, really open. So I've just put in a few planters with some benches dotted around and that is really it in there. I just, I didn't want to add too much. I wanted to keep it as the fountain and the statue centerpiece with people able to walk freely around it. So that's all we've done there. And then we've come through into this little plaza, added a couple of fountains, another statue, which I've got off the workshop, which seems very old school European style vibes there. We do have a few benches, a couple of new stands, ticket booths, that sort of thing. And then out here, what I've tried to do is make this look like it could be restaurants, added some awnings on the top here, extended out this little table area onto this plaza. So people could sit here and right at the foot of Lord Eggsy's castle there and enjoy their lunch their dinner whatever it might be in this old historic district here and yeah we've done the same around here just a few more little tables eateries extended them out down the side of these buildings another statue very very simple um, and then we've got things like this little garden in here to add just a touch of greenery with a couple of benches around the back of what i would kind of assume these are houses even though they aren't functioning in that way right now so that is all we've done there and then over here, I have just moved this wall up so it encloses the market area just a little bit better. Added in a few lights dotted around and a few more props just here and there, the baskets and things lying around. And then we have extended out the riding stables and just put that into place there. So it's just a very simple little area just outside the main castle walls, but hopefully one that the tourists would come and visit and enjoy. And then we have also put in a statue, a few more benches dotted around all over the place and that kind of thing, just to line some of the streets up and decorate them up a little bit more. And then of course, down by the ferry, I used node controller here to widen this path because I thought actually it made a bit more sense if it was wide, this big wide entrance coming in through the gate. So we've done that all the way up to the main path there, put, stretched this out to 200% across all of the nodes. And then we have added in a few of the park life cafe souvenir shops, toilets here just to give the tourists somewhere to visit on their way into the castle. Act as a bit of an information booth, like the information booth here, where they can grab their information from. I'll just say that that is like massively floating. So let's just adjust this information booth back down to earth just a little bit. Benches are on the ground, but that was particularly high. That's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. It's not perfect, but it will do for this slopey area. And then we've just come in with some trees and filled out the overgrowth around the castle and that is it so yeah quite a small area covered today but actually i feel like it's quite an important one and one that i've been wanting to do with something with for a long time so let's just let's just one more time take the trip through the old market street here up to lord eggsy's castle and yeah we have a little bit of history brought into oridan finally so i'm liking how this has turned out but for today, that is going to be it. So if you have enjoyed this episode, a like below is always really, really appreciated. And drop me a comment as well. Let me know what you thought. Any other suggestions for Auradon as well. Otherwise, that is it from me for now. So I will catch you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>